110 years ago, faced with the prospect of a gargantuan conflict, the wristwatch was adopted out of the necessity to equip as many soldiers as possible with time tracking devices. The watch ceased to be a luxury accessory reserved for the elites the way it used to be in its pocket form and became a tool for the masses. A new criteria to showcase status through timekeeping was needed, and the answer was chocolate. Just as much a symbol of wealth as bars of gold, the rectangular shape of the exotic dessert must have inspired the Swiss manufacturers. You see, Cartier can trace the roots of their most famous watch back to the tanks of the Great War, but the truth is they don't look at all like the clumsy war chariots of the time and were not catered to those that fought in the trenches. No, you needed to be wealthy to afford a tank, almost as wealthy as you needed to be to afford chocolate. The rest is history, as for the past 100 years, Cartier, Gégé Le Coutre, Piaget, Rolex or Patek Philippe have given us breathtaking pieces of silky smooth watchmaking chocolate. Oozing personality, style and timeless elegance, their clean, minimalistic yet bold designs have ushered in the watchmaking into the celebration of modernity, luxury and technology that was Art Deco. This is not a luxury timepiece. In fact, coming in at around $175 on a leather strap, this is as much a budget watch as any. Of course, for the money, you can't expect but a quartz movement. But at least you don't have to worry about the second hand not hitting the markers, since there's no second hand to begin with. The two hands that this watch has do match the applied Art Deco numerals as they all have a dark blue color that livens up at the right angle and luminosity. The contrast they provide on the brushed silver dial makes telling the time easy and there's just enough AR coating under the sapphire crystal to guarantee legibility regardless of the viewing angle that unless you forget what date it is, as the smallest date window I have ever seen makes reading it impossible. So, especially when considering there's no intermediary position of the crown for the quick date set, one would be better off to just ignore what happens south of the painted Cambridge text. The all polished case back is a print and scratch magnet, so you won't be eager to look at the engraving, proudly announcing for the past three years that this is a heritage brand with more than 125 years of history. I guess we're in for a couple of more years of this until they reach the 130 years milestone. One important and I'd say unexpected piece of information you can also find on the case back is that this watch has a 5 atmosphere resistance rating despite the push-pull crown. And this reminds me that this watch does have a crown, fantastically well disguised and predictably hard to operate. With its 28 by 42 mm dimensions, the watch has more presence on the wrist than the 7 mm height or 50 gram weight might suggest. Taking advantage of the 20 mm lugs, there are unlimited ways to accessorize this timepiece as you can wear it on pretty much any color or type of strap. I myself decided that this is a business casual watch whose hands and indices need some highlighting. So, why should you buy this watch? I believe this is a great introduction to the rectangle. Because of the relative scarcity of timepieces of this shape, it's really difficult to size up such a watch without holding and handling it. Then the price is exactly where it should be and you actually can take advantage of British webshop's tremendous competitivity 
and get one as low as $150. You get stainless steel, sapphire crystal and a quartz that doesn't actually look like a quartz. And this is, unexpectedly, the reason I will sell it and never buy it again. You see, I hate misalignment and that's the primary reason I'm not a fan of quartz. Seeing this watch has no tick in hand, I was elated. And then I started wearing it. Now, you are collectors, so you will understand. Wearing a watch is an experience. Every time you look at your watch, you mostly do it to just look at it. It's like falling asleep next to the most beautiful person in the world and waking up every half hour just to stare. So when I look at this, I get nothing. Nothing at all. Life happens, life moves, yet this piece of steel and glass just lays there frigid, staring back at me. Luckily, as the world of microbrands is so vast, I have two alternatives which, at some point, I hope to be able to feature on the channel. Albert Villa and Vario. Yes, they're twice as expensive, but there's soul in them. I can feel it jumping at me from the photos. So, to be continued. <laughs>